front gate of every event. Clichés become clichés because there is some foundation of truth in them that resonates with the vast majority of people within a shared culture. One unattributed quote that applies emphatically to event planning has become almost a mantra in Western civilization. Quote, you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. End quote. Creating a first impression at each and every event you plan is essential to the overall success of the occasion and the imprint it makes on the attendees and your client. When writing your plan, we advise that you create a section titled The Front Gate and spend a fair bit of time and energy thinking through what the elements of the entry point to your event are and how to make them an unforgettably positive experience for all who attend it. This discussion about the first impression of your event isn't about the logistics of your registration network, table covers and drapes and power supplies, but about the first experience of your event that you give your attendees, guests, presenters, key players, and VIPs. Dr. Bill Lampton, a noted business and self-improvement coach, has identified what he considers to be the seven essential elements of creating a great first impression person to person. We have expanded these seven elements to serve as the core of your event's first impression. The greatest way to make a positive first impression is to demonstrate immediately that the other person, not you, is the center of attention. There are three must-dos to make sure you achieve fir the first step in creating the best possible first impression. Greet the presenters and attendees when they arrive at the destination whenever possible, not the venue but the destination, say at the airport or train station, and treat them like VIPs. See video 21, How to Treat Your VIPs. Welcome them to the venue with enthusiasm through signage and fanfare, and have members of your team, you included when possible, greet each individual or group at the venue entrance and steer or escort them to check-in or registration where you will always offer refreshments. Practice good listening skills. Train your team to be tremendous listeners and make sure they even make it a point to take note in writing of specific requests, complaints, or compliments made by the attendees or presenters. When you're live at an event, it is a very hectic time. That's no excuse for any team member to be dismissive of a guest or speaker, ever. Each member of your team is there for one reason only, to make sure the attendees have a fulfilling experience. Also, ask your attendees for anonymous comments and give them ample opportunity to fill out evaluations. Your attendees have a voice and you must welcome that. Use the name of a new acquaintance frequently. The Four Seasons Hotel chain takes pride in their policy that once a member of their staff has met you, they will remember you and address you by name in perpetuity. That's no easy feat. It is certainly something event management teams should aspire to. Of course, we don't expect your team to know the names of guests at trade shows and concerts, but we do expect them to know the names of the vendors, stars, and their managers and agents and use them. You should also personalize gift items to give to your attendees whenever possible, i.e. event branded water containers, coffee mugs, or seat pillows with their name on them. Be careful with humor. Humor is very subjective and what delights one person can be offensive to the next. It is very difficult to find entirely neutral styles of humor that don't have some basis in cultural differences. Our best advice is to train your team to laugh easily and warmly at other people's humor but not attempt to be funny themselves. At the front gate and throughout the event, ask your staff to smile openly, chuckle and laugh sincerely when warranted, and foster an environment of easy communication and camaraderie, but avoid using quips and jokes as icebreakers. Give up the need to be right. There is no place for confrontation between your team and the presenters and attendees, especially when they arrive, tired from travel and ready to check in or register quickly and easily and be welcomed with a capital W. If your registration desk can't find proof of an attendee's payment, greet them, get them settled in, and look for it later. Don't hold up the line and argue for any reason. Even if the person is a gate crasher and you know it, that's no reason to set a negative mood and inconvenience other attendees. You can work these things out later behind the scenes. Appearance counts. This statement doesn't just apply to how well and appropriately your team is dressed and groomed, which is extremely important. 
but also to how the overall front gate presents. It should always be clean, uncluttered, organized, attractive, well laid out, and easy to navigate, and welcoming. The way you decorate your front gate should never be an afterthought. It is the first place your attendees will see that sets the mood for the entire event. Make sure it is evocative of the mission and culture of the event and makes people immediately glad they decided to allocate some precious time to attending. Speaking style impacts the first impression. Listeners judge our intelligence and leadership ability by the words we select and how we use them. Not only do the members of your team need to be well versed in their responsibilities and able to answer questions, they need to do so concisely, eloquently, and in a friendly and professional manner. manner. No slang, no you knows, no huhs. Carry this policy a bit further by really thinking through your signage. It too should be precise, informative, spelled correctly, well placed, and never unnecessary. If you incorporate these seven basic principles and operations and attitude of your event's front gate operations, you've won half the battle. Now you need to address two more issues. The first is a must-have, the second a wish list item. You must manage your check-in and registration and information processes for maximum efficiency and ease of accessibility for all your guests, presenter, and VIPs. You may want to incorporate some welcoming fanfare. First, let's look at the essentials of a high, highly functional registration slash check-in slash information area at the entrance to your venue. For the sake of this discussion, our model will be a hotel and convention center where registration and check-in are both in the main lobby of the hotel. You need to ask and answer all of these questions to maximize the effectiveness of your process and the response from your guests. How do the attendees and presenters arrive at the venue, enter, and manage their personal belongings? If they are delivered by shuttle or limo, or drive in and access valet parking, they will be delivered to the main registration entrance. If, however, they drive in and park at a satellite parking area and walk in from there or public transportation drop-off, you need to get them straight to the main entrance without confusing them or getting them lost. Your guests should never have to stand somewhere scratching their head and wondering which way to go or if they are in the right place. In the latter case, set up a manned information stand with the biggest event flag you can manage flying high above it. Make sure people immediately know where to go to get directions. Then place signs strategically. Follow the principles of cairning trails. When you are standing at one cairn, you see the next one down the trail. Don't over cairn though, that's insulting to your guest's intelligence and looks ridiculous. If the weather is bad, how do we provide protection at the entrance or for those getting to the entrance? Make sure your guests don't enter the registration soaked, covered with snow, or so hot they want to pass out. If you have a satellite parking area, provide a shelter and a shuttle in case of inclement weather. Also, ask the venue to put a canopy from the entrance to the drop-off point if one doesn't already exist. Your guests should be and feel cared for from the minute they reach the destination and venue. Nothing can turn a mood sour faster than exposure to nasty weather. Is the process ADA compliant? First, it's the law. Moreover, it's your responsibility as an excellent event planner to make sure you can quickly and easily assist guests who have vision or speech issues, need crutches, canes, walkers, or wheelchairs, etc. Establish a location at your registration where people who need extra space, a place to sit, or attentive assistance can be fast-tracked through the process and made comfortable during it. If your guest has a broken leg and comes in on crutches, don't make them stand in line. If your guest uses a wheelchair, don't make them navigate the rope line. If a large crowd shows up at the same time or there's some type of bottleneck at the registration or check-in desk, how do we proceed so as not to inconvenience our guests? In the event that a line forms, make sure people aren't just standing there wondering and waiting. Walk the line offering them beverages, snacks, and any paperwork they can complete while they wait. In the worst case, that of your network going down for instance, get them checked in and accommodated in their rooms or open a lounge area nearby as a waiting room. Provide entertainment and refreshments in the lounge and have your team notify of people in guest rooms when registration reopens. Do whatever you can to make the inconvenience you are experiencing as a show management team have no negative impact on the attendees. What signage is needed to direct people from the arrival point through the process? Make sure your signage is as good as, this, 
as the outside signage. The inside signage is as good as the outside signage. Folks should be able to step through the door, do a five second scan of the room, and know instantly where they need to be. What are the steps each attendee should follow to get through the entire process quickly and pleasantly? Using our model of the Hotel Convention Center where guests will be staying overnight, here's a plug and play step by step for most events. First, greet them at the entrance and make sure their personal belongings are expedited to check in so they don't need to haul them around. Second, offer them refreshment. Third, steer them in the direction of where they need to be to register and pick up their attendee packet. Fourth, register them and pass them on to the person who will give them their welcome gift and direct them to check in. Fifth, have a team member at check in to make sure it goes smoothly and quickly for each guest and that their questions are answered. Sixth, after they are checked in, have a team member make sure their personal belongings are on the way to their room and hand them an invitation complete with directions to the next activity or event, i.e. the icebreakers reception. What is the ideal layout of information registration and check-in desks based on the layout of the space? When diagramming your registration, follow the same principles you learned in video 22, the nuts and bolts of room setup. Think of the registration area as a stand-up reception and allow 8 square feet of space per person. First, sketch in all the architectural elements of the room that cannot be changed, then set up registration and information tables and chairs so the backs of the chairs are at least 30 inches from the wall and there are no more than 7 side by side without an aisle between tables. Finally, determine how you will funnel the guests towards the first step and guide them through the process in an orderly manner. Velvet rope lines are great for this purpose. Make sure any cordon off pathways are plenty wide enough so people don't feel closed in. How do you hand off your attendees at the end of the process? As mentioned a bit earlier, it is as important to greet your guests as to say goodbye to them when they leave your presence. In this case, you need someone to thank them for going through the process and make sure they have everything they need as they leave the registration and check-in area. These people are what gives your events that personal touch that is greatly appreciated and indelibly remembered. Last but not least, let's talk a bit about providing fanfare at the front gate. The iconic fanfare in American culture is probably the red carpet at the Oscars. By definition, fanfare is short and lively sounding of trumpets and a showy outward display. Fanfare is traditionally used as announcement and greeting and now encompasses everything boldly done for that purpose. Fanfare is not always appropriate or necessary, but in cases where it is and your budget allows it, fanfare can add quite a bit more mood and energy to the front gate of any event. A simple red carpet and event and event befitting live music, bagpipes, string quartet, folk singer with a guitar, for example, might be all you need. Perhaps you want to do a balloon launch, use strobe lights, deliver people from the parking lot to the entrance by horse and buggy. Fanfare can be achieved with pyrotechnics, waterworks, confetti machines, floral arrangements, toys, robots, pretty much anything you can imagine. Just remember when you are planning fanfare for your front gate that all the permitting and safety regulations we've discussed in earlier videos apply. For example, if you're doing an outdoor balloon launch or even releasing hundreds of pigeons, you may need a permit and you definitely need clearance from all the area airports. The sky is the limit, literally. Now, go welcome your guests.